I first learned about the Hatfield-McCoy feud from Bugs Bunny. There are rabbit critters bound to be around here somewhere on account of our seas, his footy print. When I was a little kid, I saw a Bugs Bunny cartoon in which there were these two feuding mountaineer families. Give him punk on hand. The Hatfield and McCoy feud really created the stereotype of the hillbilly in the American popular consciousness. And it was this image of a simple-minded, violent, backward people. There's a stereotype that these were toothless moonshine and hillbillies taking pot shots at one another. But it couldn't be further from the truth. The Hatfield-McCoy feud is perhaps the most famous family conflict in American history. It has become a mythical tale of jealousy, rage, and revenge. Yet the events that took place near the end of the 19th century in central Appalachia are part of a much richer and more complex story. A story of a people's way of life slipping away and their struggle to adapt to forces far beyond their control. The Hatfield-McCoy feud is much more than an Appalachian story. It's an American story. One way to embrace all the radical changes that urbanism and industrialism were bringing was to define the rural as not just different, but in some ways dangerous and problematic. We need to understand that sometimes the people telling the story about violence have as much of an agenda as the people who are acting out the violence in the first place. What you really see is a story of the dark underbelly of industrialization and how industrialization impacted rural communities in America. The Tug Fork Valley, deep in the mountains of central Appalachia, was the edge of the American frontier in the early 1800s. The Hatfields and the McCoys were among the earliest white settlers in the valley, a rugged and remote region filled with thick forests, rocky streams, and steep ridges. The Hatfields and the McCoys were absolutely identical to thousands of other families and extended families that lived in the mountains at the same time. People who had the run of a great deal of woods and took from that all sorts of things which they lived upon and which they sold. They would hunt for deer and bear. They kept hogs and they would let their hogs go out in, in the woods to forage before they would take them in in the fall and slaughter them. And that's what would keep them living through the winter. They wanted that opportunity to succeed in life, and that's what they found in the mountains. The Tug Fork formed the border between the states of Kentucky and Virginia. The Hatfields, McCoys, and other families settled in the Tug Valley on both sides of the shallow waterway a tributary of the Big Sandy River that fed into the Ohio. Anderson Hatfield was born in 1839 on the Virginia side of the tug. One of 11 children, Hatfield was known as a fierce hunter. He reportedly killed a mountain lion as a boy and was said to have been given the name Devil Ants at an early age. Randolph McCoy, also called Randall, grew up in a family of 13 children living a hard scrabble life on a farm neighboring the Hatfields. More than a decade older than Anderson Hatfield, McCoy later moved with his wife and family across the Tug to Kentucky. The Tug Valley region was a tight-knit community. Family was always important. Um, you take care of your family first, but you also take care of your neighbors. The citizens of that valley, they were intermarried, 
the Hatfields and McCoys were intermarried. They worked together. They did business together. There was a lot of harmony and strength in this valley. In April 1861, the outbreak of the Civil War ripped apart the bonds of harmony in the Tug Valley, between and even within families. On the Virginia side of the Tug, Anderson Hatfield and many of his neighbors enlisted in the Confederate Army when the state decided to secede. Across the river, Kentucky eventually sided with the Union. In the McCoy family, Randolph signed up with the Confederacy, while two of his brothers joined the Union. Families and individuals made decisions for themselves and ended up making oppositional decisions very close to each other. So you would have a pro-Union family, a pro-Confederate family living cheek and jowl. Divisions in the Tug Valley became even more complicated when voters in Western Virginia elected in 1863 to leave the Confederacy and join the Union as the new state of West Virginia. The Tug Valley was on the borderlands, and areas in the Civil War that were on the borderlands had a very different experience. It became a battleground. Guerrilla fighters from both sides went back and forth, looting, killing livestock, burning down homes, in large part terrorizing the local population. To protect his family from raids occurring on the border, Hatfield deserted the regular army and joined a local Confederate militia unit. He soon earned a reputation for fearlessness. Near the end of the war, Randolph McCoy's brother, who had sided with the Union, was found brutally murdered. Some McCoys blamed Anderson Hatfield's guerrilla unit. Sometimes these acts of war were based on prior animosity. Sometimes these acts of war created the animosity. One way or the other, though, a civil war is going to be very disruptive for a place like the Tug River Valley. 